it was quiet. Well, no, that's not true. It was New Year's Eve. I was with my, over to Mommy's house. So I brought New Year's in with her, and I was happy because, you know, Mommy's more or less confined to the bed, so I was kind of happy for that. Well, oh, yeah, good. I just stayed home. Mm -hmm. Well, that was good. That was good. At least she didn't bring it in by herself. She had oh, yes. you. No, I can't make sure she came and got me. Okay, that's all right. That is. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. That's all I'm right. I'm happy to bring it in with her because she's 90 something years old and not doing that well. So, you know. Well, she's, she's doing well compared to the age. I tell you. Oh God, yeah. That's a blessing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's very really true there. That's very true. You were not on last week, right? Nope, I wasn't. Oh, I was trying to find you. I was trying <laughs> to find you now. Are you on now? Yep, I'm on now. I mean, yep. I mean uh, yeah, on uh, Facebook. Yeah. I I go to with yep, we're on. We're on. Good afternoon, and thank you for being with us this afternoon. This is the first Tuesday in January. Happy New Year to everyone. We pray that everyone had a wonderful year coming in, that you just enjoyed and, and, and laid back and rest and gave thought to what you knew you let go of in year 2022. Thinking about all your accomplishments and all the things that you're going to accomplish for this year. Amen. As we look to the Lord, our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence today. We thank you, God, that you allow us to see a new year. And thank you, God, that you're bringing us together. We thank you, Lord, for just your son, your son, who the celebration of his birth is still ringing out even through this beginning of this new year. So God, we thank you. As we come now to study your word, we ask, oh Heavenly Father, that you come. We ask that the real teacher comes, amen, and give the word that we need in this lesson. Lord, we thank you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, amen. 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 Okay. Okay, words you should know. <clears throat> Let's see, I don't see anybody on Facebook joining us yet, but Sister Carbion is on, on the conference line with us. Words you should know. Submit. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce this Greek word, but it means to voluntarily cooperate. Assume responsibility and carry a burden. Submit. And we're going to see a lot of this word in this passage of scripture today. Provoke. Provoke. We're going to see it in verse 4, the 6th chapter. It means to rouse, to wrath, exasperation, or anger. Amen. A unifying principle. Family matters. Or family matters. The writer of, Ephes of Ephesians states that family members should love and care for one another just as Christ loves and cares for the church. The writer of 1 John says that we must put our love in action and make loving others our way of life. Our subject today is Christ's love and this will be ending up uh, the book of Ephesians where Paul is writing to the book of to the uh, Ephesus, this will be ending it up. Uh, this uh, lesson, Amen. And it is a good lesson to go back and uh, Ephesians is a good book to go back and look <clears throat> at and, and see how Jesus is the one that broke down the walls of partition. Jesus is the one that 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 help us to understand that it's all about him and not about us and and it's all about what we do one for another so the book of Ephesus he's telling Ephesus that which is a Greek community which means there were a Gentile community that he established as on one of his missionary journeys okay 
Our Bible background is Ephesians 5th chapter, 21st verse through the 6th chapter, 4th verse, which is also our printed text. And our devotional reading is John 3rd chapter, verses 16 through 21, and Brother Jordan will be reading. For God so loved the world, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light. For their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do not what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Mm. Oh my, that that is, isn't it? That is, people people who are scared. Say what, Sister Carbion? I said we're scared of the light, but we're living in darkness. That's that's it. That's that's uh -huh. it. That's it. We're scared. People are scared of the light when they are doing wrong. They're scared because they know that the light will bring out what they're doing. They know that, you know, but people who don't fear the darkness and know that Jesus is the light, you know, hey, we try to stand in the light with all that we've done and, and everything. We know that he has forgiven us. And that's what the people that are still in the dark don't understand, that he does forgive. He does forgive. You know, and, and when people understand that, it'll make a big difference in, in what they think of the Lord and how they serve the Lord. When they understand that he will forgive them of any sins that they have done, he will forgive. That's what he said. He didn't come to, to save the world and I mean to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. And that's and that's what he does. So we gotta we gotta thank God for that. We gotta we gotta thank him for that. Amen. Amen. Which is a good way to start off this fifth chapter study. Amen. Amen. By the end of the lesson, aim, by the end of the lesson, we will compare Christ's love for the church with the relationships among family members. We're gonna appreciate Christ's sacrifice to show love and care for the church. And we're going to accept responsibility for showing love in the family as Christ demonstrated love for the church. Amen. Did Gary get on? Amen. You on, Gary? Gary's on. Okay. Okay. We're, we're ready for you with the in focus. All right. All right. Christ's love, right? Christ's love, Christ love yes. Okay. Angie Hart broke as she read through her student papers. Angie had assigned her fifth grade student an assignment that began, I wish, as a way to get them thinking about the new year. The student were instructed to to write at least two sentences on the topic. As you expect to read things like, I wish we could go on a vacation to this Disneyland. Uh, I wish I could have a new computer. Instead, 15 out of 20 students wrote about their families. I... I wish my dad would come back. I wish my parents didn't fight all the time. I wish I could. Good 
get good grades so my parents would love me. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Gary. Gary, Gary, hold on a minute. Someone, someone has a TV on. If you could mute your TV or turn it down. Okay. Go ahead, Gary. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish I I wish my brother wasn't so mean. I wish mom, boyfriend didn't live with us. I wish we could have Christmas all together for once. Angie bowed her head over the papers and wept. Her student needed the love of Christ to permeate their lives and transform their family. She prayed for the upcoming year to bring these students and their family Christ, peace, and love. Strong families are built upon the foundation of Christ's love for the church. In this lesson, we will see how serving one another in love creates an atmosphere where families can grow and thrive. Amen. 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 Strong families are built upon the foundation of Christ's love for the church. And in this lesson, we're going to see how serving one another in love creates an atmosphere where families can grow and thrive. It did not say, and, and we need to understand this, that as a family that knows the Lord, when your family come together serving the Lord, when you see your children serving the Lord, when you are serving the Lord, when the head of household is serving the Lord, that doesn't mean that you are not going to have any adversities in your life. Exactly. Amen. Amen. You're going to have them. But you are connected to a source of power. Oh, yeah. And that's God. Yeah. That with him, yeah. all things are possible. And no matter what you go through, he will bring you through. Yeah. That much you yeah. have to believe. You have to believe that. I think, I think a lot of times we as Christians kind of get it twisted. We think that because we come into the body of Christ that we are to no longer have any problems. And that's not true. <laughs> we just, we're connected to a source that's the problem solver. And we have to trust him to get us through everything that we're going through. Even the good times. We have to trust him to get us through that. So this, this, this young woman, it's a good thing that she is a Christian. Because any, any other teacher probably would have looked at these papers and probably laughed and thought it was funny that they had all these problems. But this woman, it yeah. touched her heart. It touched her yeah. heart, the problems that they were having. That meant she understood even the more about the problems she was having individually with each one of them. Yeah. And all she could do was pray. Pray and ask for the peace of God. To visit and be with those families. That's that's awesome. That is. That's awesome. You know, the problems, Pastor, the problems that the children were having, uh, there were problems that you wouldn't expect for the children, children, to even deal with, encounter at all. Exactly. And I think is what hurted her so because it touched my heart when I was reading the list. So, my goodness. My goodness. And this was a fifth grade class. Uh -huh. A fifth grade class. That means that 
we as single parents, we as parents need to understand that our children right. do get to an age where they kind of see and understand what's going on in the house. They, they may not say anything about it. Some may act out with it in their own way, but they do start understanding what's going on in the house. And you know, because of that, we have to be careful how we treat children because we don't know what they've been through the day or the night before. I mean, the freedom is love. Exactly. And that's all ages. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You you just you just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know. And and that and that's why even though, you know, in in some jobs and everything, you can't talk about Christ, you can't talk about religion, you can't talk. That that's why with us as Christians, we have to be on our P's and Q's. And I don't mean that every day we got to keep walking and stepping on eggshells. That's not what I'm saying. Because <laughs> you'll be wore yourself down <laughs> trying to do that. <laughs> but, what, but what I'm saying, you just have to be careful of, 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 of when you're in your surroundings with other people because you don't know who's right. watching you. Right, right. You know, you, you don't know who's watching you. You don't want to look like the bag lady, of course. You don't want to be the person that if anybody say anything to you, you're going to bite the heads off. You don't want to be that because you want to have an inviting spirit so that people will see Christ in you and want what you have. Even if they don't know that it's Christ, they know it's something different. Exactly. And they and they want a part of that in their lives. They they want it in their lives. That that's why we have to be careful. We have to be careful. And and sometimes even walking on eggshells, you might walk on an egg. Bam. <laughs> to God. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Submitting. I'll keep in mind verse. Is submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And right at this moment, I want to welcome, amen, Sister Margie Spearman, amen, amen, of Wilmington, amen. Uh, Brother Theodore DeBose is watching. I don't know if he just checked us out for a moment and he's gone on, but if he's still there, we welcome you, amen. Our brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, JJ's brother, and, and our sister-in-law, Robin and Barry, amen, telling everybody Happy New Year, amen, and Elder James Jordan here in Castle Hain. he's watching us. Oh my God, and a friend of mine, a, a, a former postmaster, Sister Lois Barber, she's watching, I don't know if she's still there, if she's just watching for a moment, amen, but to God be the glory, and my brother-in-law out of Cincinnati, James Swinford is watching, amen, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm going to read the people, places, and times because I think this is important. It's called the household code. The verse is found in Ephesians 5th chapter 21 through 6 and 4, which we're going to get into, comprise what is called a household code. At the time Paul wrote Ephesians, Many Romans were concerned that religious religions such as Judaism and Christianity would negatively influence traditional Roman family values. To align these fears and show their support for these values, Christian Jews and other religious groups would often employ a standard form of statements. Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to give God's directives for family also known as household codes, the statements were often broken down into discussion of husband and wife, father and children. And then our background says that Ephesians 5, Paul tells believers to live out a life of holiness in relation 
to the world around them. He challenges them to live wisely, being led by the Spirit. Such a life will produce a believer who becomes more like Christ every day. As we become more like Christ, we will learn to respect and to submit to others in love and humility. And the foundation of family relationships is to be modeled after Christ's love for the church. After Christ's love for the church, the family. Because Christ is the, bride, is the, is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get into our lesson now. Someone reading uh, verses 21 through 24, and then reading wives' submission should reflect Christ's authority over the church. Well, I'll take that. Um, instructions for Christian households. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the, of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Amen. In depth, wives' submission should reflect Christ's authority over the church. Ephesians 5.21 is a general instruction to all believers to submit to one another in love. This principle is directly associated with verse 18, where Paul instructs believers to be filled with the Spirit. When we are living a spirit-led life, God gives us the grace to live in an attitude of humility and submission to others. Paul addresses the wives first. He instructs wives to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord, verse 22. The word submit in this verse means to yield, yield one's rights or to cooperate. This word does not imply slavish obedience or being silent in the home. Though the household codes of ancient days often require a wife to obey her husband. Paul does not make this a requirement as he does for the children. Rather, he appeals to a wise dedication to God as a basis for submission to her husband. In other words, when a wife honors and respects her husband, she submits to God and his plan for the family. In verse 23, Paul explains why a wife is to submit to her husband, because he is the head of the wife and family, just as Christ is the head of the church. Christ was appointed by God to be the head of the church. On the basis of this authority, the church is to submit to him. Some people might conclude from these verses that there is an inequality between male and female. But Paul makes it clear that in Christ, all are equal. See Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, 8 to 12 and Galatians 3:28. Within this equality, however, order and respect for authority should exist. Okay. Amen. 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 Anybody Amen. anybody got any questions about that? <laughs> well, I do. I do. Of course, I'm not married, but um, I know of people, and what what I understood here uh, to submit to submit is okay to submit to your husband to respect what he is saying, but you do should 
think you should allow yourself to be able to speak on it at certain times. Depends on what it is. It is not a slavish obedience that you are told to do things like a lap dog. You should have respect for him as he should have respect for you. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> My God, <laughs> I I well, I have a question. You know, in 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 this verse in this section, when when women are submitting to their husbands, do they are they, aren't they supposed to be evenly yoked? Oh, that's what I was just saying. Mm-hmm. But she was too afraid too. Probably I'm not going to like what I say because even when I'm going through, I, I don't like it either. But. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, I, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, it is God's word. It, it doesn't say whether they're unequally yoked or not. It doesn't say it. It, it says. Let's see. 22 says, For wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. Submit to your husband as to the Lord. As If you would do what the Lord would say, if you would do what the Lord would ask you to do, then he wants you to do the same thing that you would do for him you would do for your husband. Does it mean that you have to be a Christian woman to understand this? Does it mean he has to be a Christian man for you to do this? No. No, right. No, it doesn't. It it means do what you supposed to do. God is not going to let his children go without watching over them and making sure that they're taken care of. I'm a firm believer of that. I'm a firm believer of that. Whatever, and, and, and I know this, this has been all my life, this has been, you know, that's why a lot of people don't preach on Ephesians. <laughs> They, they don't. You don't. You don't hear. You don't hear much about it. You. You really don't. We can't conform to the ways in, of the world and, and what and what we feel like is good or what we feel like we should do. But it's all about what Christ wants us to do. It's all about what Christ wants us to do because Paul says in Corinthians and he also says in Romans that if if you are unevenly yoked. You should live to where you will be able to bring him into the body of Christ or her. Or her. Bring them into the body of Christ. If everybody walked around, if every Christian walked around looking for another Christian to marry, um, some would get, some, some would be okay. they find theirs. Some won't find that match because you can't help who you fall in love with. Exactly. That's true. That's very true. Pastor, Pastor. I'm listening. Oh, I, oh, I didn't know if you heard me. <laughs> yeah. And that is very true. And uh, I, I, I think what she was talking about is a little different than what I was talking about. I was talking about both parties knowing what the Bible says about submission submission uh, knowing yeah um but regardless of what it, um unevenly yoke or not 
uh, respect is just should be there regardless of Re both parties. It should be there. It should be there mm -hmm. regardless. You shouldn't you shouldn't treat mm -hmm. anybody disrespectful. Your spouse, your children. We're gonna get into that later. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't treat anybody disrespectful. And when you when you submit, it doesn't mean, and, and men need to get this out of their mind, that it doesn't mean that you're going to be giving somebody a lot of commands for them to obey you because there's a difference in obeying and submitting. There's a difference. I'm not just putting that. I'm not just putting that. That's not what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm not just putting that. Exactly. It the, it says the word in the verse means to yield one's rights or to cooperate. You know, sometimes when you're discussing things, sometimes you know you got to you got to back off and and, and you got to go at a standstill, and then you got to realize, okay, you're the head of the house, so you I, we've discussed it. We're not agreeing, but a decision has to be made. And and you make the decision. I trust you to make the decision. It's right. Right, right. When he made Adam and Eve, when he made Adam and then made Eve, he took Eve from Adam's body, a bone, and created that feet and created her. He didn't say Adam. You're, you, I want you to walk over her, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because mm -hmm. if, if that was so, we wouldn't be in a sinful world today. We wouldn't be. Oh, we would be. I thought, okay. No, we wouldn't be. Because Adam, when, when she came to him with that fruit, and knowing what the word was to him, he should have just went on and threw the apple as far as he could throw it. <laughs> so it's respect. It's, it's, it's totally respect. It's about respecting. It's about understanding. It's about who you are. Because while we're submitting, then we're going to see where he tells the man, you got to love her just like Christ loved the church. Exactly. Yes, Lord, go ahead and speak it. That is so true. Love her and respect her just like God loves us and respect us. Exactly. So while you are, while while men are out there trying to figure out how they can make you be obedient, and every time I tell her to do something, she does it. Hey. Yeah. Do you love the church like God loved the church? Because that ain't what God still gives us. What we still have a will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We still have a will, but it's for whether you are in Christ or not in Christ, whether you're equally yoked or unequally yoked or not even yoked. <laughs> If neither, if neither one of you know Christ, there are still principles of the Bible, principles of the of 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 the earth that we should go by. We still have principles. And that's respect. That's respect, regardless of what it is. The situation, that's respect. Did I help you out, Marilyn? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. The question is, did I help me? Okay. That's why they don't mess with each other. Okay. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, let's say what the men have to say about this. JJ, what you got to say? Nothing. You didn't hear. <laughs> Gary, what you got to say about it? I just need that 
<laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. What you gotta say, Gary? Hey, Yes, you do. give a shout out to uh, Reverend Betty Newkirk. She's watching us. Amen. And we're praying for uh, Brother Amen. Charles Betty. We're praying for him. Amen. And praying for you. And I got something for you that I've been sending to St. James and you're not there. And now I got to put it in the mail. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and my sister-in-law, Rosa Randolph, she's on with us this evening. She's on with us. Um The only thing that that I can the, the only the only thing that I can say we, so we can go on because this this is a good lesson this is a good lesson mm -hmm. about us as females us as females he said whatever we do we do it as to the Lord you know not not just submitting to our husbands everybody that means on your job whatever you do on your job you do it as unto the Lord. That means in your community, whatever you do for anybody, you do it as unto the Lord. Because when he gets the glory, when God gets the glory out of what you do for him, there is going to be a blessing. A blessing is going to come forth from it. Probably a blessing you're not going to be able to contain or stand because it's just going to be that bad, big because what you do, you do everything as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. everything, everything. 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 As unto the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. As unto the Lord. Okay, let's talk. Let's, let's see what he tells the husbands to do in verses uh, 25 through 33. <laughs> Okay, great. But for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. Uh, and we are members of his body. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Yes. Okay, into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Amen. Amen. Husband's love for their wives should reflect Christ's love for the church. Paul now turns his attention to the husband. Interestingly, interestingly, he does not stress the husband's authority or headship over the wife. Instead, Paul charges the husband to love his wife, and not only is the husband supposed to love the wife, he is to 
He is to love her. He is to love her, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. A husband's love for his wife is to follow the pattern of Christ's love for the church. Christ's love for the church was self-sacrificing. A self-sacrificing love is unselfish love. A husband with self-sacrificing love will demonstrate his love by seeking the best for his wife. This kind of love is committed and faithful, even through rough times. This kind of love does not depend on emotions or circumstances, but strives to hold the marriage together forever. A loving Christ-like husband will also provide for his wife, just as the church is the body of Christ. A wife is a part of her husband. God says that a husband should love his wife just as he loves himself. As a husband nourishes, protects, and provides for his wife, he loves himself. Christ's love for the church is a secure love. The love of a husband for his wife should be the same. When a couple marries, they become one flesh. Paul explains this as part of the mystery of marriage. Within the security of this relationship, a wife can submit to her husband. Mm. Amen. Mm. Mm. Marilyn, they helped Amen. answer. They helped answer your question, that's, right? Yes, it did. That's deep. That's deep. Yep, that helped to help. That helped to answer that question. Uh, men have a responsibility an even greater responsibility because once they marry, they, you know, you, you taking on, when you take that woman from her home, from out, from her parents in, into your house, you're saying, I'm going to care for her. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to do everything I need for her. Yes. Today we understand that it takes two in the household to work. It takes two. Yeah. It takes two incomes to to survive with the way our our with the way things are. It takes that. Amen. But the man is still whether we like it or not, when you're married, he's in he's in authority. He's in authority. He's the provider. He is the provider. He's he's in authority. He is. He really is. And whether you e evenly yoked or unevenly yoked, if, if you're not, if, you, if neither one of you know Christ and one come to know Christ, it's, it's burden on, on whichever one comes to know Christ first to help to bring that person into the body of Christ. Not to do things, not, 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 uh, Telling them, you know, well, I'm a child of God now and, and you are not and you can't tell me this and you can't tell me that. God is not in that home. <laughs> he ain't in that home when you standing flat foot going to be, you know, telling somebody what's what now because you know the Lord and they don't know the Lord. Your, your job is to help bring them into the body of Christ. Right, right, right. Right. You know, yes, as a as as a female or male, that means you got to turn the cheek. You got to turn it. You got to turn it. And while you're turning, you got to ask the Lord. Lord, stand between me before I have to turn it the other way. <laughs> Come get between us. And, and I think it works better if you don't force them to do, let them come in on their own. On their own. Right. That, that's that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's it. When you get up in the morning to go to church, you know, I'm going to church. If you want to go with me, come on. If not, maybe I'll see you there later. If not, I'll just see you when I get back home. And you go on. You go on. But But don't force anybody to do anything. And then one of those mornings when you say, well, I'm getting ready to go to church. And they say, well, I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'm coming with you. It'll probably knock you off your feet, but, but that's God working. Yeah, normally that's what would happen. 
-hmm. That's God working. Because we got to understand, we don't change anybody. The Holy Spirit does that. Mm -hmm. We don't change anybody. All we can do is live a life that they will see a light. Something different. That's good. That's good. If you're constantly bickering with them all the time because they're not. What, what, what can God get accomplished when you got the wrong thing in mind? And that's why it's so important for people to understand. Coming into the body of Christ doesn't mean you're not going to have trials and tribulations. Yeah. It's not going to, it doesn't mean you're not going to have problems with your finances. It doesn't mean that you, that it, it, we have this whole concept that if I come to the Lord every, and everything will be all right because you have an advocate now that you didn't have before. Right. You have someone to fight a battle that you didn't have before. Right. You just gotta trust God him to do it. Right. Well, well, you know, he said the way wouldn't be easy. Lord have mercy. Lord, he, he, he wants to make sure that that you're giving your all in all. So take you through the rough time so that you will have a testimony. Lord have mercy. If there's no test, then you don't have a testimony. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That man is under a lot of responsibility because when, when he said you got to love your wife like he loves the church, God sacrificed his, Jesus sacrificed his life for the church. He want us to he want us to be joyous. He want us to be happy. He want us to have an abundant life. But he also help us to understand that when that time come when things are not happy, things are not joyous, still trust me. S know that I'm still I'm still God. And I'm not going to let right. you go through nothing. Like you said, Marilyn, the other night, I'm not going to put any more on you than you can bear. Than you can bear. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like it, but you know, in the end, you know, he's, he's coming through. Not in your time, because your time is not his. He's coming through when he says, okay. Amen. This is it. This is your spot. Amen. 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 And yes, if it, it doesn't make a perfect marriage because you know the Lord, <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't make a perfect marriage, but it could be a good marriage. A good marriage. Mm -hmm. It can be a good marriage. It could be a good marriage. But but it it, it 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 just helps when you're both on one accord. And you can you can share thoughts and, and, and verses and things in the Bible. You know that that's one good way of communicating. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yes, and then for those who are unevenly yoked, when you're asking God to change, when you're asking God to to come into your family. When you when when you, if you're the, if you're the female and you're asking God make give him what he needs to be the head of the household give him what he needs to be like you you know when you start seeing the change hear, hear what I say now when you start seeing the change then you got to ask the Lord to help you accept it. <laughs> Exactly. So sometimes we have to be careful what we ask. For. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So you 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 have to ask the Lord to to help help me help me Lord help me. Uh, Elder James Jordan says, "Likewise, ye husbands dwell dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel." 
And he got some more on here. As, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Amen. And he's quoting 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, 7th verse. Amen. 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 A weakened vessel is like fine china. You take great care of her. That's what he said. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Okay, let's let's go on to uh anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? And I know this this might be hard. It, it this this might be hard, but it's there. It's there. And if you're in the body of Christ, it may not come as easy, but it will come with you the more the closer you get to Christ the more you understand how you need to act in your home it you you it it really does help things don't bother you like they used to when you get a, a better relationship with Christ that's true that's so true yes yes so true yes I agree with that totally. You know, you say, "Oh God, I'm I'm really growing in Christ." Because I remember, if this had to happen, uh, oh God, I'd have lifted the ceiling and put it back on. <laughs> and now it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't bother you because you understand, ain't but so much I can do. Like yeah, but Christ, you can do everything. You God, you said it ain't nothing impossible for you. Okay, we're going to verses 1 through 4, going into chapter 6. I'll, I'll do it. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have long life on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Children should, should be obedient and loved. After discussing the husband-wife relationship, Paul now gives specific instructions to children. Children are exhorted to obey their parents in the Lord. That is in the spirit of obedience as if they were obeying God. Paul also instructs children to obey their parents because it's the right thing to do. Obedience to parents is also a commandment of God. And according to Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, when a child honors, respects, and obeys his parents, that child is blessed. Just as children have a responsibility to obey their parents, parents also have responsibility to their children. In verse 4, Paul speaks specifically to fathers as the head of the family. He first gives the father a negative instruction. Do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. A father's role in his child's life makes a direct impact on the child's concept of God, the father. Fathers, therefore, need to be watchful and consider how their behavior influences their children's actions. Unreasonable expectations, harsh or unfair punishment, or plain favors will be dis will disheartened a child and can lead to disillusionment or rebellion. Instead of these behaviors, fathers are encouraged positively to rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. It is the father's responsibility to see that his children are being raised according to God's principles. Fathers are to nurture their children, which means to care for them tenderly and lead them gently into God's ways. Therefore, parents try to give correction and instructions with the goal of developing their child's character and pointing the child toward righteousness. We give our children a great gift when we teach them how to obey God and his word. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. Anybody got any questions on that? Mm. Children should be obedient and loved. Yeah. They should be obedient and loved. You can't help but look at the first family. 
which was Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Hey. <laughs> Look at that first family. <laughs> and you saw the... To that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you see what happened in that family, the dissension with one feeling like that the other one was treated better than he was. And, and it wasn't necessarily by his parents. It was just the fact that Abel, 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 whatever he did, he did as unto the Lord. He did it to please the Lord. He did what was right. And Cain couldn't understand why his brother was being blessed. He couldn't understand. He couldn't understand it. So, today, we have children and families that don't understand. Don't understand. You got one that'll go, that'll come home in the afternoon, do their homework, and then come out and, and want to know what else need to be done. What can I do to help? You ain't even asked them. They just come out and help. Then you got one that'll come in, don't do the homework, sit in there with the headphones on, playing a game, whatever, and then want to come out and eat. Then you got to ask them did to do the homework, and if they ain't, you got to make them do it. And then you go in there and you got to fight your way into the room. <laughs> you know. And then the first thing they holler is, you like them more than you like me. Well, you ain't done nothing. It ain't that I like them more than you. Look at you. Your, your rebellion has caused you to just to, to separate yourself from us. <laughs> you know, but you got to love them the same. And 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 then look at the prodigal son. Look at the prodigal son. Cuz I couldn't help I couldn't I couldn't help but think of this. The prodigal son, give me my part. Let me go on and do what I want to do. Give me mine. And the other son didn't know how he felt till the son came back. You going to bring him back? You going to have a party for him? I've been working for you the whole time. He going to go out and squander his money. You going to bring him back and give him a party. I've been here the whole time. You ain't never give me a party with me and my friends. Lord have mercy. You never know what your children is thinking. I tell you. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Nobody can love him, continue to love him like his father. He Till it's gone. It's gone. Till it's gone. And the one that was staying there, he found his father found out how much she loved him after the brother came back. You gonna share? You you gonna you 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 gonna do this for him? After what he did to you? <laughs> After what he did to us. And he was probably thinking. Well since he come back now. You got, are you going to give him anything else. That you going to give him what belongs to me. <laughs> yeah. You know that's what he'll ask. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But the kids. Teaching our children. To be obedient. Teaching when they when they start understanding right from wrong, we got to help them understand right from wrong. 
First commandment of promise. That your days will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. We wonder why people reach the age of 91, 100. Somewhere down the line, they was good to somebody. It was good to their mom and daddy. My God, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Fathers, don't provoke your children. Don't provoke them into doing what's wrong. Don't always, don't, and, and, and when it say fathers, I guess it means mothers too. Don't ever tell a child what they cannot do and what they, they, they don't amount to nothing or they're not going to be nothing. That's not, we should keep them encouraged to do something, to That's be right. somebody. Right. We got to keep them encouraged. We got to, if we, if nobody else don't believe in them, we have to. We have to. That's right. Regardless of what, we have to. We have to. You know, yes, it hurts. That's why if in our lives, if we want to mimic Jesus, we got to mimic Jesus in every way. Would Jesus turn his back on us? Does he turn his back on us when we're coming to him? Does he not answer our prayers when we go to him? He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. This is this is a good this is a good lesson on family. This is a good lesson on family. Paul is telling the Ephesians how it's important, and he makes that analogy with family, with Jesus Christ. He makes that analogy. He lets us know if you if you want if you want to have a good family, a loving family, an understanding family then you need to mimic your family after Christ. Understand the order first. First is Christ. Then the husband is the head of the house. And then the female. You got to understand the order. The order for the family. You got to understand that. And it doesn't mean that the man walk around there with a whip trying to tell everybody what to do and when to do it and what time to do it. That's not what it's saying for him to do. You know, you're, you're, you're in leadership and you're in authority. You're in leadership and you're in authority. And that means you got to show love in every aspect of your home. Wives, females, we got to we got to show that respect. We can't disrespect them in front of people. And they shouldn't be disrespecting us in front of people. If you don't hold hands and you get out of the car and you start grabbing hands, grab hands and walk on with a smile. When you get back in the car, then let your hands go and put the sm and put that smudge back on your face. I mean, really. Yeah, and sooner or later you'll get tired of doing that and you're just going to be smiling every time you move. <laughs> we, serve a, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. That in all of our mess, 
Ever, from, from the time we're born up until our present time, he has taken care of us. And no matter what goes down, he still loves us. He still loves us. Yes, he does. Okay, anybody, anybody got any, anybody else got any questions? <laughs> it is a good lesson. I want to, I want to thank my sister Latanya. Amen. She's watching. I don't know how long she's on or anything. Uh, Yushame, who spent a couple of weeks with us um, and just left Sunday, amen, brought the new year in with us and left Sunday morning. We thank the Lord for her, amen, amen. And she's got on here to my, in due time he will answer. She says, not, nor in private either. There must be something else I must have said she said that. And then she said, respect should always be present in the relationship of marriage. Respect. Respect and communication. They just like an American Express card. Don't wake up without it. <laughs> just like an American Express card. <laughs> To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Will someone lead us out in prayer? Amen. For this wonderful new year. Someone lead us out in prayer. Most gracious Father, we come humbly before your throne of grace. Thanking you, Father, for allowing us to see a new year. Thank you, Lord. The third day in a new year. Father, we just say thank you for all that you do. We say thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins and rose the third day that we may have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for the fellowship in this Bible study tonight. And we thank you for clarity and understanding, Father. Now, Father, we ask that you continue to help us to walk the path that you would have us to walk, Lord. We ask that you bless all those that we're duty-bound to pray for. This yes. Study in the prison bound. Those, Father, that are in the hospital, Father, you know what they stand in need of. So, Father, have your way with them. And, Father, we're asking you to touch Pastor Phoebe. Touch her from the crown of Thank her head to the soul of her feet, God. We know that she's not feeling well, so, God, have your way with Thank them. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, God, and just help her to feel better. Go with us throughout this day, God. Help us to let our light shine before men so that you may be glorified. Mm. Father, go with us throughout this day, this year, this very moment, God. And keep us at the foot of the cross. Look it up at your face. Jesus. God, we say thank you for all that you do. Thank Even you, all blessings. We ask and pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We ask that you continue to be blessed. And everybody that's drawing Social Security, you got a blessing this month. Amen. When you get them checks, I know you're going to be excited. Amen. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. I ain't messing with y'all money. Anyway, <laughs> just continue to be blessed. Tell them about church day Sunday. <laughs> oh yeah, and by the and by the way, for those of you who are on here, third Sunday, third Sunday, we will I will have uh I will do church service that Saturday. Not third Sunday, because we, we, we won't be here, but I will do church that Saturday evening, probably about ten o'clock, and it'll be on Facebook so you can upload. I'll be on and I'll and I'll and I'll talk more about it Sunday. Uh because we'll be on the plane at six in the morning on Sunday. And and in airports where I cannot do that service by Facebook. But I'm gonna do it on Saturday. I'll do it that Saturday evening. 
probably about 10 o'clock. So anybody got at Facebook, night? you can go back and look at it and pull it up for that Sunday. Or uh, I'll be on a conference line as well that night, and I'll give more details about it on Sunday. Amen. 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 Be blessed, everybody, until we meet again. You be blessed also. Okay. Amen. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.